What's up everybody? So Kathleen Zellner filed a new motion yesterday on May 14th, 2024. Now we're going to go over it here today. If my voice sounds a little bit different, it's because I have the dreaded man cold and it sucks. So that's why if I sound different, that's why I sound different. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be okay though. If not, I love you all. <laughs> so we're going to go over it here. We're going to start with the introduction. I will link the filing in the description below so you can go have a view for yourself if you want to read it on your own. The state's response fills in gaps with findings and analysis the circuit court never made, thereby highlighting that opinion is fundamentally flawed. For example, the circuit court never analyzed Mr. Avery's pleading under State v. Allen to reach the conclusion that Mr. Avery insufficiently pled his claims. The state ignores this to repeatedly argue that the circuit court properly found that Avery did not plead sufficient facts. The state is correct that the only issue before this court is whether Stephen Avery pled sufficient non-conclusionary facts within the four corners of his third section uh, to entitle him to a hearing. However, the state is incorrect in claiming that the circuit court denied him an evidentiary hearing on that basis. It did not. Rather, it improperly relied upon evidence outside of Stephen Avery's record on appeal such as Brendan's confession and the false assertions that there was forensic evidence linking Brendan Dassey to the crime. That was really weird. I can't remember which filing it was in, but they talked about like forensic evidence that linked Brendan Dassey to the killing of Teresa Halbach, which doesn't exist. It's not a thing. I, it doesn't matter which side you're on. That's just not out there. It doesn't exist. The only thing against Brendan Dassey was his, in my opinion, coerced confession. Stephen Avery argued that the circuit court improperly merged the requirements of State versus Edmonds and made satisfying Edmonds contingent upon establishing the three elements of Denny. The circuit court focused disproportionately on the Denny motive, on the Denny motive element and ignored the independent materiality of the new impeachment evidence which results from Bobby Dassey being in possession of Teresa Halbach's vehicle. The state compounds these errors by attacking the credibility of the witness who attested he saw Bobby Dassey in, po in possession of Teresa Halbach's vehicle after she was reported missing, without mentioning which authority requires Stephen Avery to address alleged facts outside his record, Brendan Dassey's alleged confession. The state argues that because Stephen Avery failed to address evidence from a completely different case, his pleading fails. Lastly, the state accuses Stephen Avery of waiving his Brady versus Maryland claims on appeal, ignoring the fact that Stephen Avery specifically addressed them in the context of the circuit court finding that the alleged Brady evidence was immaterial. The state waived its argument on Stephen Avery's Brady claims. Next part, argument. Stephen Avery pled sufficient facts in his motion to meet the newly discovered evidence standard. Does it seem like to anyone else that they, these people are actually having a trial without actually being in a courtroom. I don't necessarily mean a trial, but there are, it seems like they're arguing a case back and forth fairly often without ever actually getting inside a courtroom. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's standard practice. Maybe this is everything you generally have to do to get an evidentiary hearing. It just seems like a lot of back and forth between the courts, the lawyers, and everybody else without actually ever setting, in, setting foot inside a courtroom. Standard of review. This State's recitation of the law governing this court's review is correct. B. The circuit court erred in its evaluation of the materiality prong of the newly discovered evidence test. The state misconstrues Stephen Avery's arguments and the circuit court's opinion. The state contends that Stephen Avery argues that the circuit court should have considered whether Thomas Sawinski's and Thomas Bursch 
affidavits were independently material, arguing they rendered the forensic evidence introduced against Stephen Avery at trial unreliable because Bobby Dassey was a third-party perpetrator suspect. Stephen Avery, Stephen Avery never made this argument. Stephen Avery's argument is in determining that Stephen Avery's new evidence could only be material to the issue of a potential third-party suspect. It completely ignored its inherent materiality to other material issues in Stephen Avery's case. Stephen Avery lists other reasons to establish his Denny argument. Stephen Avery contends that Thomas Sawinski, that the Thomas Sawinski evidence is material because the RAV4 is undisputedly material evidence in the Teresa Halbach murder case, and now Bobby Dassey is connected to that material evidence. The RAV4 was the vehicle driven by Teresa Halbach on the day of her disappearance. The RAV4 contained a blood spatter of Teresa Halbach's blood in the rear cargo area and one to two millimeters of Stephen Avery's blood in the front of the vehicle. Prior to its discovery on November 5th, 2005, the the vehicle contained Teresa Halbach, her clothing, electronic devices, camera, keys, and license plate. All of these items were placed in locations that implicated Stephen Avery in her murder. Now there is a witness who places the RAV4 in the hands of the state's primary eyewitness prior to its discovery by law enforcement. The Thomas Sawinski evidence also impeaches the credibility of Bobby Dassey's trial testimony, where he established an alibi for himself while implicating Stephen Avery in the murder. Bobby Dassey testified he left the property while Teresa Halbach and her vehicle remained on the property with Stephen Avery. The, this crucial testimony allowed the state to claim it was Stephen Avery, not Bobby Dassey, who murdered Teresa Halbach and concealed her vehicle on the property. This court described Bobby Dassey's testimony as follows. Certainly, his testimony bolstered the state's theory that Halbach visited Stephen Avery on that day and did not leave the Avery property thereafter. But absent this testimony, the state still possessed significant forensic and other evidence implicating Stephen Avery in the crime committed on his property. Now, the Thomas Sawinski evidence undermines the cumulative effect of the other evidence presented against Stephen Avery. Brian Dassey's previously submitted affidavit demonstrates that Bobby Dassey had no alibi and witnessed Teresa Halbach and her vehicle leave the property approximately the same time he left. Stephen Avery was in his trailer alone and according to the state, he never left the property that afternoon or evening, which rules him out as the perpetrator. Cumulative effect of the many false statements made by Bobby Dassey have to be reconsidered in light of his possession of Teresa Halbach's vehicle. The state mistakenly contends that Stephen Avery failed to account for the bullet with Teresa Halbach's DNA on it that was shot from the gun in Stephen Avery's possession and found in Stephen Avery's garage. Stephen Avery has specifically addressed this allegation. Further, the state claims that Thomas Sawinski's affidavit only establishes that he believes he saw Bobby Dassey. However, Thomas Sawinski was certain he saw Bobby Dassey. The state also contends that Stephen Avery made no argument regarding Thomas Burrish's affidavit Stephen Avery did, arguing Mr. Burrish corroborates the Thomas Sawinski evidence. The materiality of Mr. Avery's Edmonds claim is not contingent upon satisfying the Denny test because the evidence is independently material. The state correctly states the standard for seeking a new trial based on the allegation of newly discovered evidence. The state adopts the circuit court's erroneous view that Stephen Avery's newly discovered evidence can only be material if it satisfies Denny's first. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Mr. Avery has satisfied both tests. Stephen Avery provided sufficient facts to meet the Denny requirements. Stephen Avery agrees with the state of the law governing Denny, but not the state's interpretation of it. 
Mr. Avery pled sufficient facts to establish that Bobby Dassey had a motive for the murder. The state spent three pages addressing Dressler versus MC. C A U G H T R Y. Mr. Avery specifically relied upon Dressler for this court's finding that the pictures depicting violence were offered to prove Dressler's fasc fascination with death and mutilation, as this trait is undeniable is undeniably probative of a motive, intent, or plan to commit a vicious murder. The violent photographs on the Dassey computer illustrate the same probative trait. Lastly, to clarify Stephen Avery's statement that this court pointed out in its opinion previously that Denny evidence must be viewed in the aggregate, which the state claims is false. This court described the viewing did this court described viewing the evidence in the aggregate, exactly the standard articulated in State versus Wilson. This court improperly found that Stephen Avery's evidence does not find the Denny opportunity element. The state has improperly relied on State versus Kreider to argue that Stephen Avery had to show Bobby had the contacts, tools, time, and or other means necessary to have committed the crime and failed to do so. The state claims that Wilson supports the imposition of this burden of Stephen Avery. It does not. Well, the Wilson paragraphs the state cites conclude that more evidence is required in this specific instance where vague allegations have been made about a third party hiring an undetermined hitman. In this case, Bobby has been specifically identified as having possession of material evidence in the murder case. The state copied from its original response to Stephen Avery's third motion for post-conviction relief a list of activities it claims Bobby would have been required to perform to commit the murder and plant the evidence to frame his uncle. Stephen Avery rebutted all of these points in his circuit court reply brief. The RAV4 is a material piece of evidence in the crime. Since the only similar Wisconsin case on this point is the State versus Williams, this court can look to the Missouri case for guidance. There, the state presented other explanations for the discovery of material evidence just as the state is doing here. The court rejected that approach, stating, the state argues that Ted, H-E-L-M-I-G-S, initial possession of some of the canceled checks in their late discovery with the purse only shows an attempt to cover up Dale, same last name as Ted's, crime. That may be true. However, the fact that there may be other explanations for the discovery of the canceled checks with the purse beside an inference that Ted threw the purse and the canceled checks in the river sometime following the murder of Norma, same last name, does not relieve us of the obligation to acknowledge that Ted has now been connected to the purse, material evidence in Norma's murder case. The Missouri court found that Ted's mere possession of the canceled checks was sufficient to connect him to a key piece of evidence in the crime, the purse where the canceled checks were found. Here, the court admitted that Stephen Avery has established Bobby Dassey's possession of the RAV4, but created other explanations other than acknowledging that Bobby had possession of the RAV4 sometime following his murder of Teresa Halbach. Man, she's str I mean, I know she's been doing this for a while, but she straight out wrote following his murder of Teresa Halbach. Bobby is now connected to the material evidence in the Teresa Halbach murder case. And the state improperly disputes the credibility of Stephen Avery's witness and his post-conviction lawyers. The state falsely, falsely accuses Stephen Avery's recent attorney of putting up a $100,000 bounty for perpetrated witness, which implies, which it implies resulted in Thomas Burrish's affidavit. Stephen Avery's attorney did not put up the $100,000 bounty. I believe that was Mark Hodnot. I'm not 100, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe it was Mark Hodnot who I think 
is from Australia. I could be completely wrong on that, but I believe it was him and or his company that was responsible for that. Maybe you can correct me in the comments if that's not the case. Once Maybe it goes on and explains it here. Once again, the state alleges false facts outside the record. Unlike the state, the circuit court correctly acknowledged the Sawinski affidavit taken as true for the purpose of this motion directly links Bobby Dassey to possession of the victim's vehicle. However, it stated there are other reasons that Bobby Dassey could have been in possession of the car that night, including Bobby was trying to help hide evidence to protect two individuals directly linked by forensic evidence to this murder and convicted of the crime. That's where they talk about Brendan Dassey being linked by forensic evidence to the murder of Teresa Halbach. Again, that's not a thing. That doesn't exist. And they either did one of two things. They either completely fabricated that sentence or just don't know the facts of the case enough and just made a giant mistake. Either one, unacceptable. This is an untrue statement because Brendan Dassey was never linked to the crime by any forensic evidence and Bobby's testimony did not help Stephen Avery. Rather, it ensured his conviction. Most importantly, the circuit court was not relied was not relieved of the obligation to acknowledge that Bobby Dassey has now been connected to material evidence in Teresa Halbach's murder. The Denny test only requires an inference that Bobby is directly connected to the murder of Teresa Halbach, nothing more. By having possession of Teresa Halbach's vehicle after her disappearance, the inference can certainly be made the Thomas Sawinski evidence is being offered as evidence in the missing piece, the direct connection between Bobby Dassey and Teresa Halbach's murder. Contrary to the state's and circuit court's positions, Stephen Avery does not need to prove Bobby Dassey's guilt of the murder beyond a reasonable doubt. The state, oh, D, there is reasonable, there is a reasonable probability that presenting Stephen Avery's newly discovered evidence undermines confidence in the outcome of Stephen Avery's trial. The state erroneously contends there is no possibility that any jury hearing it would have a reasonable doubt about Stephen Avery's guilt. The state claims that even if Stephen Avery met the Denny and Edmonds standards, he has not explained his DNA on the hood latch of the RAV4. Stephen Avery has always contended the hood latch swabs were submitted by Investor Weirgert for the illegally seized groin swabs taken from Stephen Avery on November 9th, 2005. The state incorrectly contends Stephen Avery fails to address its trial expert's testimony that there was a fragment from virtually every bone in the human body being found in Stephen Avery's burn pit. Stephen Avery did address this issue. The state incorrectly contends that Stephen Avery does nothing to explain how Bobby Dassey could have possibly be responsible for the bullet with Teresa Halbach's DNA on it being found in the garage and matched the gun and matched to the gun above Stephen Avery's bed. Stephen Avery also addressed this. The new evidence would have allowed the defense to impeach Bobby Dassey's trial testimony. Bobby would no longer be the unbiased witness described by prosecutor Ken Kratz. The forensic evidence would have been viewed as planted or at the very least tainted by being in the hands of a third party. With the new evidence, the defense could have argued Stephen Avery returned to his trailer, Teresa Halbach left the property in her vehicle, and Bobby followed her got her to pull over and assaulted and murdered her at some point. He planted the RAV4 on the Avery property and proceeded to remove and plant the el electronic devices, the key, the bones, her clothing, her DNA on the bullet and Stephen Avery's blood. The Thomas Sawinski evidence when viewed in the aggregate, uh, including all of the false statements, made by Bobby Dassey to law enforcement at trial would have provided a reasonable probability of a different outcome at trial. E. Contrary to the state's position, the circuit court's inaccurate factual findings are material because they impose a higher burden on Stephen Avery. The state defends the circuit court's erroneous reliance 
upon Brendan's confession, even though it is not part of the Avery record. The state claims Brendan's confession is a fact Stephen Avery must account for to show a legitimate tendency Bobby Dassey committed the crime no matter whether the state introduced it at the last trial. And Stephen Avery failed to provide any facts explaining why or how Bobby Dassey could be responsible for Brendan's confession. Brendan's confession also directly contradicts the state's theory in Avery's trial and that is why the state did not introduce it. The lack of the forensic evidence refuted by Brendan's story of Teresa Halbach being bound, beaten, stabbed, and cut in Avery's bedroom. Brendan's story had multiple versions of where Teresa Halbach was shot. The state, by making this final argument, is trying to avoid the simple undisputed fact that Bobby Dassey was in possession of the material evidence in the case, the RAV4, and that this fact directly connects him to Teresa Halbach's murder. Stephen Avery has met the materiality requirements of Denny, Edmonds, and Brady with the new Thomas Sawinski evidence. Conclusion. Mr. Avery respectfully requests that this court grant him one of the following alternate remedies. Reverse the orders denying post-conviction relief and grant an evidentiary hearing. Two, reverse the judgments of conviction and the orders denying post-conviction relief and remand for a new trial. Three, grant any other relief this court deems appropriate. Date it this 14th day of May 2024. Well, there we go. That's Kathleen Zellner's newest filing on behalf of Stephen Avery. What do you think? Everything is linked in the description below. I hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.